will denigrate that. In fact, I did a few years ago, did a small bit uh, in a, uh, the movie um, Family Guy, uh, Stewie, Gr- Stewie Griffin, the Ensel story. And when I first got that script, I said, no, there's no way I'll do this. And my son actually talked me into doing it. I think we talked about this in last time. Uh, but I ended up doing it because my son and, and agents convinced me that it's a different year, it's a different time. And one thing, I hadn't, I didn't want to hurt any Thundercats fans' feelings. And as they reminded me, those people who were 12 then are in their 30s now. And, you know, they're going to they're gonna see it as being funny. And they're going to understand now that it's, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a loving Kidding around with fun cats, and it was. And I never, and I worried about getting, and I never got one email from Fun Cats fans saying you sold out, you let us down. They all wrote me and said it was so funny that you would do that. No, I mean, but when I when I first saw that, I thought it was like, well, you know, I loved this as a kid, but now I realize that it was a little bit cheesy, so I kind of exactly. wanted to take the piss out of and exactly, you know. exactly. And before I did that, they tell me that, and now I've seen them on YouTube. Uh, the Family Guy had done a couple of little jabs like that uh, on the series with Seth MacFarlane playing along. And, and another reason that I decided and finally used to do it is that Seth MacFarlane called me. And uh, I guess he heard that I was a little hesitant, and he, he wanted to reassure me that he loved, he loved Thundercats and that it was a loving little poke, as you called it, and that you know it was not going to be something that... They weren't doing it to try to make fun or anything, and, and that that helped convince me. What did you think of Robot Chicken's take on it? Because I know, yeah, as you said, Seth MacFarlane did the voice of Lino for that. Well, you know, they did a really strange take on it. I thought it was quite very funny. strange, very strange. Yeah, and I now I think Family Guy is one of the funniest, intelligently funny shows on television. And uh, and the, the Robot Chicken one is I'm not I'm not going to say it's you know I'm not, not going to put it down. It's just a, a little out of my you know um, it doesn't it doesn't hit me. You know it's a little it, it comes at you in a strange way. And I think you really have to be about you know 20 or 24 years old uh, to to get it. You know and I understand it's just not funny to me. You know. No, that's fair enough. I it mean, doesn't mean it's not good. It's just you know we all have different. Some types of humor don't affect people in the same way. Some people hate Mel Brooks movies. I think they're the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. So, did you meet Seth MacFarlane then? What did you think of him? What did I think of him? Yeah. Oh, very nice guy. Very, very nice guy. Very pleasant guy. And, um, we, in fact, we were talking about him just today. I was talking with him about somebody, and he told me something I didn't know about. I've seen him on TV and everything, and I said, I've always said, he's brilliant, he's funny, you know, he sings like, like Frank Sinatra. I mean, uh, he's great, and he's talented, and he directs and all that. And I said, but he's always seems a little strange, a little quirky when I see him on inter- interviews. And things. Like, he, you're not sure Did you watch him on Larry King? Like, uh, Did he watch him on Larry King? Yeah, no, but somebody else would mention the Larry King interview, and said he was a little strange there. And then they said, well, you know what happened to him? Uh, he had a... And, and now I forgot what it was. Something horrible in his life. Do you remember what it was? Oh, it was. Um, I think he was supposed to take a plane on 9/11. Yes. And he ended up he missing it. He was booked on a flight for 9/11 and um, uh, missed the flight or something like that. Yeah. And, yeah, and that would make anybody for the rest of their lives, I think, a little, you know, give you a whole new slant on life. I think life. he gets quite irritated about it though, because when I watch him being interviewed, it seems that every interviewer asks him that same question. So, what was it like to be sort of in nine eleven? He's like, well, I wasn't quite in it. I was sort of supposed to be on that flight and I missed it. But every every interviewer asks him about that. But Larry King's such a veteran; he's going to ask him about it anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. But you can understand. I can just imagine if it were you and you, the rest of your life, every. Every day of your life, it pops in the back of your mind, man, I, I should be dead now. Yeah, you know? exactly. With this new series, then, so what's the status on the Thundercats movie? Do you know where that's at these days? I, I, right now, if Warner Brothers says it's been put on the back burner. It's been put, you know, they announced that a few months ago, uh, that they had postponed it. And I was a little surprised. That I was, you know, so I, I, I can only uh, uh, imagine, or my only take on it uh, uh, from my angle of thinking about it from being in the business is probably something like um, they had, they've had such great success with the, the Batman series it's just been renewed for another season and I think maybe they thought you know what instead of doing the movie and putting you know 80 million dollars into one into a movie that may or may not go why don't we do a series first I think that might have been the thinking you know 
I have no way of knowing, but it, but it would certainly sound reasonable. Let's do the series for as much cheaper, and and um, then we if that, goes, if that goes, then we do the movie. You know, it would certainly be easier to promote a movie uh, and, and get a, get an audience and the media to, you know, sell a lot of tickets right away if it were based on a on a, a hit series. Well, what's your thoughts on the animation of the new series then? Because they've gone for more of a sort of darker anime feel to it. Have you seen the yeah, actual... I, I, I'll have to wait and see. I don't know because I'm not that much... I've seen some anime, you know, but I don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, there was one picture on the internet somebody showed me. And I don't know if it was an actual Warner Brothers uh, uh, product, um, but it but it looks very dark, yeah. Uh, it was Lionel, and it was uh, his eyes were blazing. And so, But I, I don't know if that's... The, and, and, and that may have just been, I mean, let's, uh, f- frankly, uh, you could take a cell, an animation cell um, uh, from the original Thundercats uh, of a certain scene where a lion happened to be in the shadow, in, in the cave, you know, uh, and, and uh, there was lightning, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and that one cell made it, it, you might think the whole series looked like that, and it didn't, you know. So I don't know. I, I will have to wait and see what it looks like. I mean, the comics were also, I mean, the comics were always known for being a little bit dark. I mean, we had some here released in the UK. Let's say they went in that direction where it was a little bit darker, like sort of the Batman series went into it, went from sort of Adam West, sort of the animated series. Would you have a real problem with that? Would that be No, I, I'm not, I wouldn't have a problem with anything they do. I mean, it's, it's their, hey, they own it. They own it. And I mean, I like it a certain for a certain thing, but it's, it's none of my business. Frankly, I'm, I'm a paid I'm a paid employee. You know what I'm saying? Uh, personally, I may wish they hadn't done it, but we'll have to wait and see. You know, I did, like I said from 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 my participation in it so far and what I've read and talked to the people about uh, is it's going to be quality. They're going to they're going to keep. I can tell by the script and everything. They're going to keep to the. Uh, they are in fact uh, the press release. Um, President Warner Bros. even even said uh, we recognize that that to this day that it's a, it's a classic and that there are real true fans who are anxious and worried that we're going to you know uh, um, do something bad to to something they have loving memories of. So they're aware of that and I don't, they're not going to do anything. I'm sure that's that's too far out there. But we'll have to wait and see. I mean, L- Lara, let's go back to the original series. Looking at how successful the show was with the merchandise and with the series, were you surprised initially on how the show was received? I was. Well, we all were. Of course, any time you do something, we knew we knew right away after recording a few episodes. For one thing, uh, Nick, we, we began recording in, I think, uh, late... 85, 80- wasn't it? No, we began recording in 83. Really? We were we were recording for over a year before it went on television, and you had to do that because you see we we could only record we recorded um, uh, uh, two days a month and we did two episodes a day, so and you had to do that because then you, once you recorded those two or four, then you have to allow the writers the animators time to animate it, because you do the voice first and then you animate to that. It would be too, it would be almost impossible to do it the other way around to have the, the actors watch the already. Uh, produced animation and try to match them out in the lip sync, you know. So you do the voices first, then they send that to uh, Japan, and then they animate to your voice. So th- so it takes a lot of time to animate it, and then uh, you have to allow the, the writers time to come up with new scripts, you know what I'm saying? So, it, yeah, we worked for over a year, and then it hit television, and then after a few weeks, you begin to see... Um, well, you hear, you know, you hear, um, you hear what the ratings are, and you talk on the street, you know, and then uh, you meet some 15-year-old kid, and he says, "You're on Thundercats, we love that." And so, after a while, you begin to realize, hey, the, the show's a hit. And I'll tell you what, I mean, I told you the story last time, Nick, but I'll never forget the show had been on for maybe a year, year and a half. So we're talking '86 or so, and and um, uh, my children and I walked into um, a Toys R Us store. That's a huge toy store chain here. And, oh, we have it here as well. It's, yeah, it's okay, huge. so you know that, let's say, so a year before this happened, if you walked down the section of the store, you'd see one aisle of all Ninja Turtles. Yeah, it's and just always one row of Batman, one row of Well, this day we walked in and there were three aisles 